everyone welcome to the KOP channel of El Lima and starting today I'm going to show you how to use the CLI or how I use the CLI on real use cases in previous projects that I worked on uh, today I'm going to create a video to show you how to interact with Wiremock because I'm going to use Wiremock to create a stub of an API so we can use in later videos uh, so if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos and I'm going to post the links of the previous one so you can keep it up. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is Wiremock. So Wiremock, you can create stubs, you can there are, there are many use cases. You can you can put in your Java project, you can you have a standalone version, uh, you can download a jar and use a standalone version, you can use a Docker container, and that's what we're going to be using, a Docker container. And the the documentation is pretty straightforward. There is a lot of documentation there. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a command to start a API. So I'm going to say bb uh, cli new test API. All right. So now I have a command test API. I'm going to copy and paste here some of some some stuff so we don't. We don't lose much time. Right. And here is going to be start API. Here's going to be start Wiremark API start. Cool. All right. But what I'm going to what, what exactly am i going to put here so we are going to spin up a container with firemark so and this is the container that this is the command that i'm going to execute i already have the command here so let me explain what's happening here All right so i'm saying i want to execute a docker container uh and i want to delete everything after that container was executed so don't don't keep trash basically uh, I'm going to map the host port to the container port. So this is the host port and this is the container port. So what I'm saying here is that I want whenever I access the port 8080 on my computer, on my host computer, I'm going to access the container port 8080. The name of the container is going to be Wiremock. And this is the volume. Again, this is my host machine and this is the container. I'm mapping a folder inside my computer to a folder inside the container. So basically what, I'm, what, what this is doing is giving access to the application inside the container to a folder in my computer. And this is the version, right? And here is using PWD, which is the current path of my computer. So PWD is the current path of my computer. So when I execute this command, it's going to spin up uh, Wiremark. Uh, if I access localhost 8080, uh, now mappings, this is here, it's going to give a forbidden, but you have this link here called underline underline admin slash mappings where you have all your maps. Just because I executed this and I passed the volume, it created the whole structure, resources, Wiremock in my computer. So you're going to see that uh, under resources, you're going to have Wiremock, and it created two folders called mappings and uh, file. So I'm going to create a, a, a new file here, and I'm going to give it the name um, users one json right and everything here it's on the documentation there is no hidden information so like a stubbing and wiremark like if i go to in verify if i go to stubbing it's going to show you how to create a stub on your code and it's going to show how to create a stub using json right uh the way that i'm showing you so i have request And I have response. This is an API. So I have a request and I have a response. On my request, I have the method of my request. 
So this is going to be a get, could be a post, could be whatever. And here I'm going to say the URL path, URL path pattern. And this is going to be user slash one. And the response is going to be status 200, could be all four, 500, 300, whatever you want. And I'm going to say body. So the body is going to be anybody. Cool. So I'm going to, is this executing? Yes. So there is still nothing here because it loads uh, when it starts the application. So I'm going to rerun the Docker container. And now my mappings, you have information here and you have the body. But like when I open the, the link, so when I do, could be a link, the slash user, or the slash user. So, Now it's a link. You can see anybody, right? Cool. Oh, if I try to access another URL, it's not. And Wiremark has so many uses, right? You can, uh, I don't want to, uh, this is not a video specifically to deep dive on Wiremark. I'm going to create another video in the future for Wiremark to show you how you create subs from the code, to show you how you create subs from JSON, uh, a deep dive exactly on, on, on Wiremark. And there is one feature that is, you can have a template body that's going to get whatever data there is in the URL path and it's going to put in the body. So this, this means that you can have, let's say you have, uh, uh, you need 1000 JSON files. You don't need to create 1000 JSON files. Like you can change, you can get the, like a, if the only thing that's changing is the ID, you can pass, you can say, okay, get the ID number and put in the body. So you can have, you, you only need one file and you are going to change that, that file. That's what you want, right? Even though it's not going to be only, the, 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 the only change is going to be a number, but a change. But I don't want to put the, the body here because I want to create a JSON file. And the problem here is that uh, if, I, if I put a JSON file, it's going to be a pretty big file. It's going to be hard to change, hard to spot error. So I'm going to say body file name. This is what I want, body file name. And whatever, when I use body file name, is going to look for files inside the underline, underline files folder. So now I can say I want users1.json. I'm going to create that file now. Users1.json. This is going to be a JSON, of course. And it's going to be ID1. Name user one. I need to stop, restart, and refresh. So this is one. Now I have ID one users one. Right? Cool. Oh, I'm going to create four users, right? And I'm going to come back as soon as I can. So I created the file so so if I open my docker container again you're going to see that i have many mappings now so i basically created four mappings and four files the only changing the the user id cool but now i don't want to execute this command manually right i want to be able to execute from my cli of course so the command that we created earlier is going to be used for that i'm basically Come here, copying everything here, and putting here. The only thing that I'm going to change is the PW, PWD. Uh, why? Because this is mapping to the file, to the folder that is to the folder that is being executed. I don't want that. I want to be able to execute this command in any folder that I like. 
So I'm going to use, we have a variable called resources D that maps to our resource file, resource folder. All right. So I'm going to change this to resources D. Now, and I don't need this anymore. Now, it doesn't matter wherever I execute. So let me go to my home folder and I can do DB test API, start API, start in Firebox server. There you go. So if I refresh it here, All right? So great. So now we have uh, a way of starting our server. Right, so that's basically what I want to show in the next video. We're going to be actually using this for that. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. If you like it, give the thumbs up. Uh, it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I'm going to see you on my next.